Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today in Zebra 2, we're going to be making the sound. <laughs> Let's play uh, some lower stuff. You get the idea. It's a nice sort of uh, 80s kind of vibe. So now that you've heard the sound, it's a classic sound. These sounds I really find enjoyable to make because they're so fun to sort of fiddle with as you make them. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. So first things first, we are going to need a filter because we're going to run a couple oscillators through a filter and then possibly through a distortion. And so the filter is going to inform us orally about the sound moves we want to make. So I'm going to add one of those. We're going to go to VCF1. And so we have our first filter here. Now I already know I want a low pass. So we have a sound like this. And one thing I'm going to do right off the bat is I'm going to dial back the volume some. Just to be very clear of clipping. All right, so now that we have our sound, what we're going to do is let's hook up the filter to act as the envelope. I don't want the envelope to be controlling the volume in general. It's going to sound really bright, and we're going to miss the warmth of the sound. I want to use a low-pass filter. We have a whole bunch of them in here. Probably going to go with one of the ones on the bottom here. I really like these in particular. Uh, these also have a really nice quality, but for what I want to do, I'm thinking one of these three. So let's go ahead and link up envelope one to the cutoff. And the way I find this to be the most straightforward is we'll turn the cutoff all the way off and the envelope all the way up. So now when the envelope's modulation goes up because we made it positive, it's going to bring this knob up. That's I think this is the easiest way to link modulation. So, okay, we have this now. It does not sound any different because our attack is so fast it just opens the filter right away. So we're just going to bring this up a bit. We can begin to hear it doing its thing. Now, I'm going to switch my algorithm to probably this one. And you can hear the difference already, but we're going to also dial up the drive. And bring the attack even further up. One thing I kind of like with the sound we're going to make is I want sort of a wow at the beginning, sort of like a little trumpet pulse. And to do that, I'm going to bring the sustain down and the decay down as well. And we get that, oh, well, well, because we're going attack, decay, and then sustain. So it's, a, it's like a little spike. It makes it nice when you re-trigger notes, they come through really clearly. Now, we, if we move the cutoff up, we're just going to change the minimum value. If we want to change the level the cutoff hits at, we have to change the modulation. So basically you say modulation can only turn it up this much. So now it can only come up to like, I don't know, somewhere up here. And we can get rid of that bright end. So this is kind of how we adjust the cutoff now. And that's pretty nice right there. I'm going to add a shape module. And the shape module, what it's going to do is sort of drive this. Now there's one other thing actually before I add the shape module that I want to do. And that is I want to add a second oscillator just to get it a bit beefier. One thing we can also do is change the stack to dual. So we've already got it, you know, that already sounds way better in my opinion. But we're also going to add oscillator two. And on this one, we're also going to have it run in dual. And to help differentiate it from oscillator one, we're going to add a couple oscillator effects. That way, they're not super static with each other. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab fundamental. This just alters the fundamental of the waveform. And I'm just going to give it sort of, it's sort of like an EQ move. I'm just going to boost it. And we, are, we get a warmth. So if I get rid of it, it's uh, what it was before. And this is what it is now. The other thing I'd like to do is let's add a hypercomb. This is just going to add some phasing, sort of like a chorus kind of an effect to it. Just so that when we hit notes, they're different every time. And let's hear some different ranges too. Cool. Now let's go ahead and turn our shape back on. And with shape on, 
we are going to bring the depth up, but before we do so, I'm going to change it to wedge. And you could already hear it working if I turn it off. Because before, that's after. And if we bring the depth up, it sounds gorgeous in the low end. It's like real classic. Here's where we probably want to dial in our, our envelope a bit more. And right now, I'm I'm vibing right now that we need a reverb. So let's go to the global tab, and in the effects chain, we will add reverb. So we have a diffuser setting down here, and then we have sort of what you would think of as regular reverb controls up here. So this is a pretty dang crazy reverb because you can get really nice detuned kind of reverbs out of it. But I'm going to bring the feedback down a little bit and the damping up. Let's bring it. With low reverb and high damp, you get some really nice spaces. This is where you probably want to bring this back, though. If we play the low end, it'll actually smooth it out if we get rid of it. See how bright and forward that is if we just bring that up? It mellows it out a bit and it steps back away from your ears a bit in a way that's nice. And so that's why the diffuser settings on here are so amazing. Uh, but now we could go for a longer one. I'm thinking I'm probably going to go for a bit longer of a verb. Cool. So these are the reverb settings I sort of settled on. I, I sort of just fiddled with them until I got something that I was I really liked. So it's a little more apparent there's verb on there. We could dial back the feedback and mess with a couple other things if we wanted more of a transparent thing like what we had before. But I kind of like hearing it a bit on there. Uh, all right, now I'd like to drive this actually a bit harder. I'm going to bring the depth up and I'm also going to bring this drive up. And possibly throw a distortion in this mix. So we have a variety of things in here. Let's go ahead and just bring up a pre-tilt. Maybe not that much. Low band up. And let's try out a couple different ones. All right, so I have this distortion set up. And I'm going to bring back our filter envelope a bit. This nice, yeah, we're getting there. We are getting there. All right, so now that we have this set up, the last couple of things we should really look at are our mode here. Now I have it on poly. It's not gonna sound that great in poly, I don't think. I think retrigger would be a better way to play it. Especially when we get down in that low register. <laughs> not that low. Now, there's a couple of things we could also mess with. For example, we could have possibly set up a small wave thing sort of going on and then use the LFO to move it. I think the LFO possibly on like the hypercomb could sound cool. Like we'll add LFO one to that and give it some modulation depth so it just lives a little more. And possibly doing the same thing for the fundamental. Fundamentals, that's much more audible. I think we've got something here. There is one move in here that's a little strange that I just realized I did, and that is I put the reverb before the distortion. So let's go ahead and move that after and hear it in poly mode with that setup. Yeah, I still vibe the re-trigger. You never know though, it might've made it a bit smoother. Now let's put it before. I actually really like what the reverb does into the distortion. So we're going to keep it that way. It's one of those happy accidents. All right. So I think we are just about there. Here is a preview. Let's 
play uh, some lower stuff. You get the idea. It's a nice sort of uh, 80s kind of vibe. So that's that. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day.